Six hike. All right, welcome to Charity Busters. Uh oh, we got an echo chamber here. So we got Tyranny Busters. This is our weekly program every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Mario, Mario, and Mike busting tyranny upon the mind of man. If you're new to the program, We'll tell you first. You know what, Mike? Hold up right there, man. Hold hey, up. wait a minute. Now. I gotta, I gotta, That's a tyranny on Mike. That's a tyranny on my communication. I got an announcement to make, man. Okay. You know? All right. And it's been a long road here, and uh, I know it's going to make you sad, Mike, because we've kind of built up a relationship around some of this common grounds that we have. But, yeah, I'm going to go for Romney, man. Well, shut up. Well, I'll tell them what Tyranny Busters is first. <laughs> no, it's more important. No, man. no. you got to tell them what Tyranny Busters is first. Cause, oh, go ahead. You know, I'm going to fix you about this Romney thing. Well, but I don't know, man. Uh, and, uh, Tyranny Busters, folks, is when you got a programming on your mind uh, that uh, something that's not true, it's false, uh, misinformation, lies, deceit, the matrix, all this stuff where you, you've been lied to, you've accepted things to be truth. And so your mind's being controlled. This is um, the matrix. This Which is, is not happening with me and my switch to Romney. But oh, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't accuse you of that uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, well, this tyranny, people I think tyranny has to do with um, whips and chains and all of that. Jefferson's once swore an eternal hostility on the altar of God over every form of tyranny upon the mind of man. And so, and he's talking about mind control and, and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, all the lies and deceits that you've been told to make you believe a certain thing. And uh, you, you can have a tyranny on your own mind. And I guess you've got one going right now, so I want to well, help, you, no, no. help you bust that. Because there's been no force or any fraud in me coming to this, uh, really, this realization, man. You know, I, I don't know why it took me so long, probably because I hang out with you so much and you were just, maybe it was your tyranny of, you know, liberty. All this liberty talk that was putting tyranny on my mind. But the way I look at it, Mike, it's like this, man. It's like, you know, Obama doesn't like Romney, right? I don't know. Maybe they love each other. They're just putting on a show. Okay, well, that's, that's being, you know, speculating. But he says he doesn't like Romney. I don't like Obama. So... That must make Romney an okay guy, right? Well, your logic is impeccable there, Mario. I don't know how to uh, really counteract that. Um, I didn't think so. See, I'm know, gonna win you over here. We're, we're gonna. Yeah. We're gonna uh, the only thing I could say to that is, um, let's see. Uh, the Russians didn't like the Americans, and the Americans didn't like the Russians. So that meant that the Russians. Uh, for Americans, the Russians were not okay people, and for the Russians, the Americans were not okay people. Yeah, well, you might have something there, but, you know, um, we got to get this country moving forward, Mike. And All right, well, I would like you to convince me uh, why you think this guy named Romney is going to be uh, good for America. Well, I mean, number one, he's a Republican, so... We already know Republicans are for small government, and um, you know they're about individual rights. So yeah, that's it. And uh, you know he's gonna open the Keystone Pipeline. Okay, so Problem let me solved, man. Just open the pipeline. Right, so <laughs> let me ask you a question. You know how the Yankees uh, trade ball players with other b baseball teams, right? Okay. So if Romney and Obama. You know, the Republicans traded them. They traded them for each other. You know, maybe the Republicans uh, decided, well, you know, maybe Obama's more conservative than, than Romney. We'd like to make a trade here. And so they're going to trade them to the Democrats. So would you then be supporting Obama because he's be, he'll be a Republican, have an R by his name? Maybe. A little more likely would. But, I mean... 
that would never happen because uh, Obama's communist and Republicans aren't communists. So what is it about Obama that makes him a communist? Well, Mike, he hung out with communists and, you know, he's for graduating income taxes. He wants to tax the rich. You know, he's uh, he loves the Federal Reserve. That's communism. Um, and I mean, yeah, he went to a went to a you know big university. So that's where all the communists hang out. Okay, um, are you talking about? Oh, and and Obamacare. I mean, come on, Mike. Duh. Right. Well, that's what? total communism. Come on, Rom Romney all the way. Romney all day. I thought you were talking about Romney. You got me confused. No, that. Well, I know. Wait, what do you mean? Are you trying to say that Romney cares anything like Obamacare? <laughs> God, <laughs> come on, man. Oh man, everybody knows it's, it's the only difference is it's done at the state level. I mean, these guys. They well, wanna, that's a big difference, Mike. These, I mean, these the guys, state le the state should be able to mandate the people there. I mean, nowhere in the Constitution, you know, does it say that the states can't do that. And I mean. We're all about the Constitution, right? Yeah, you know what? That's a big tearing upon people's minds where they they go around there saying, well, you know, uh, the federal government shouldn't do that, but the states can do it. The states have a right to do that. And uh, that's something your buddy Romney has been going around saying. And it's like, I don't think Romney understands. He could come to my Constitution class if he wants to. But the uh, purpose of government is to secure our rights. Mm. And so it's not like, well, it's not okay for the federal government to violate your rights, but the state government can do it. That's what Romney's saying with the states can force uh, this health care mandate on you or uh, force this mandate that you have automobile insurance on you, this idea that. Uh, and, of course, the conservatives really jump behind that, too. It's like, well, yeah, because if you get in an accident and you don't have insurance, then, uh, you know, who's going to pay for it? Well, I like to buy my own insurance, thank you very much, and not make you buy it. If you don't buy it, that's too bad. On my policy, I got uninsured motorist coverage. So if you're too stupid to have in health insurance, I don't want the government marching out forcing people so then they can check to see if I got car insurance when I'm driving. Where's your car insurance, boy? Where's your papers? Come over here and get to this 502 check. Hey, is Romney in favor of 502 checks? That's what I want to know. Well, he might be out. I'll, I'll have to uh, I have to get with him. But I mean, Romney wants to arm the Syrian rebels. I mean, that's that seems, you know, you know, we that that okay. That's that's a that's a whole thing here, Mike. You know, Romney wants to have American ideas lead the Middle East. Hey. Obama just wants to follow behind the leaders of the Middle East. No, no, no. Obama's doing the same thing as Romney. Obama's carrying out George Bush's policies in the Middle East, and Obama wants to get us involved in Libya and Syria and all these places. We're still involved in Afghanistan. These guys went to the same school on foreign policy together. Well, that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about. I'm secretly starting to form a crush on George Bush. <laughs> well, I can see where you know, he would appeal to you. Well, I mean, yeah, because, you know, Kind of, because of was, his roots, he he likes small government just like Romney does, man. I mean, that's what we need, Mike. Okay, so what you're saying is there's no difference between Romney and Obama, but that doesn't matter. We need to change. Well, there's some difference between the guys, you know. Um, I think one of them is half white, and the other one's mostly white. Mm. And let's see, one's a Mormon and one's a Muslim. And what's the difference between those two religions? Can you tell me? Um, I think Mormons came after Muslims. But I, I, I think that Muhammad is actually quoted by some of the Mormon texts. I, I'm not quite totally 100% sure on well, that. Well, see, then there's a big difference, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so they're both status big government losers. Come on, give me some more Romney stuff. Uh, well, hey, wait a minute. Tell me how good Romney is on the Second Amendment. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
he just that's exactly you're totally right man he's like professional second amendment i mean haven't you heard that he he hunts like pheasants and stuff like that no 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 i heard him in the debate in 2008 he said well i don't even own a gun but my wife does oh man she probably owns those magical underwear too oh that was messed up man i don't want to start i'm not a no religious, you're a good conservative a you're a good pro life conservative and all that i understand that <laughs> um what about your buddy romney when he was running for uh, governor of massachusetts what did he say about I strongly support the right of a woman to have an abortion. Yeah, but see, that's why you don't. That's that's what you principled guys like you, Mike. You know, you guys think you're like pure as snow, and what you haven't learned to do is flip flop. I mean, it's totally rational for people to oh, a grown men to now, just. Oh, now I get it. You don't really like Romney. You just like to flip flop. Well, yeah, because you see, with Obama, we know what we're gonna get because you know he doesn't flip flop. We well, see with Romney, he's just spineless, and so we can just mold him into whatever we want. And so, yeah, he's been against all these, you know, quote unquote conservative principles. But you know, if we just put our no, no, you got it it's wrong and backwards. <laughs> you can mold Romney and whatever you want. Romney molds himself into whatever you want. Mm. So don't put it backwards and say you can mold Romney into whatever you want. Romney molds himself into whatever you want when he's running for office. But see, now I'd like to explain that mm. your great white hope. Okay. Because, you know, this hey, is... no racism around you know, this here. Is, <laughs> no, your great white hope. Hope and change here. Right? Uh. Here's your hope and change. Uh, I, will not, I want you to explain to me what Romney's going to do to fix America. Keystone Pipeline. Now, that's all you guys Hands want. down, Keystone Pipeline. That's it, man. Uh-huh. That's it. He's going to Keystone Pipeline, well, man. That's it, then. The country's fixed. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's oh. the problem here is that <clears throat> we don't have our own independent source of energy. And, you know, once we do that, I mean, $15 trillion in debt. <laughs> Who cares, man? We got... We got in, we got gas coming down from Canada, man. It's now, all good. Don't talk about the debt. I want you to talk about Romney's got this Keystone Pipeline. He's gonna. That's what he's gonna fix, right? Oh man, he's, gonna, he's gonna let that come down, right? Oh, he's. It's so already, that's that's gonna be like revolutionary change in America, right? I mean, part two, revolutionary part two. Now that's just gonna like. What, give us full employment in the country? Oh, man. Because that's what you want from government. You want government to give you security, right? Well, that's, yeah, and Romney, he's going to he's gonna round up all the illegal aliens and send them back to wherever they came from, man. Is he? Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what we got to do, where, man. Where did your buddy Romney say that, and do you actually believe that? Well, well, that's the thing, Mike. Is I can believe whatever I want with Romney because Let me ask you. he doesn't have any real positions. No, no, you're supposed to be a Romney supporter here. I'm, don't don't be mocking the man, okay? No, no. He's, you're supporting him, and you're a fan. Probably sending contributions to oh, him. Yeah. Probably twice as much as you used to send to Ron Paul. Love letters. Maybe five times as much. Poetry. Yeah. Now, so he's done this pipeline thing. Oh yeah, that's wonderful it. thing. Bam. And what about taxes, um, uh, Romney? On taxes, you think he's? Why would Romney worry about lowering tax rates? He's not paying taxes anyways, right? Well, not very much. That's why I like the guy, you know, because he's not capitulating to the whole, you know, taxing. I mean, you see, that's another thing that Obama doesn't like Romney, because you know that's why he's saying his taxes, and Obama doesn't like Romney, and so I'm just thinking. I, <laughs> I know you said now, that was now, a bad I, that was a bad reason, man, but Mike, you know what, man? You're just not gonna break me. This is it, now, man. Now Mario Mario, you keep saying that Obama doesn't like Romney, but you know, I, they like remind me a couple of lawyers that are in the courtroom and they're jumping all over each other and yeah. acting like they hate each other and after you know the, the court's all done with, everybody shakes hands and the lawyers go meet for drinks and talk about their their commissions uh, that they made. Uh, so how do you know these guys aren't having drinks together? Well, they I mean, you said one of them was a communist, and I thought you were talking about Romney when you said that. 
because no. you know all these socialist redistribution programs. Well, that that's it, Mike. Is you know okay, I'll give that to you. You know, Romney's a socialist, but Obama's a communist, man, and so that's the huge difference. Okay, well, why don't you tell me the difference between socialist and communist? Well, communism. The state owns everything, uh -huh. and then in socialism, the state has the power to redistribute everything. Well, in other words, in socialism, <laughs> you have this illusion that you own something. Well, so they they let you have this illusion. If the state can determine how much of the fruits of your labor you keep, who owns your labor? Well, if uh, I mean. I guess uh, all right, so I, I you guess you can't handle that one. Obviously, you can't handle that one. So let's talk about Romney with um, TARP bailouts. You like these Wall Street bailouts, don't you? Well, you and Romney. I mean, Mike. Sometimes you just gotta you do, you gotta do what now, you gotta do. Some people are getting Randy. mad you out there. Do what you They're getting do. mad out there because they want you to jump all over me and say Obama's for these TARP bailouts too. They they actually out there thinking. That I'm for oh, yeah. Obama. He is. They're thinking you I'm are. for Obama. You're for Obama. <laughs> yeah. That's just vote for you want to vote I'm, Paul because he's because that's, that's how vote I, for Obama. That's how the tyranny upon your mind works. If I say something Thank you for bad about your guy yourself. Romney. Yes, don't be uh, talking about Romney. But by default, boy, I'm Romney. I'm just trying to get Obama elected again. If I say anything about your guy Romney, what did I read I read something in you, here. You can't do that. I, one of just, my I read something here, one of my books about that. That's how they do that. You know, they, the, that association thing here, you know. If you're not for my guy, you must be for the other guy. Uh, yeah, well, you might have a point there, man. I might have to rethink this Romney thing just a little bit, but next oh. week, I'm going to have some more. I'm gonna Next week, Mike, I'm going to go listen to all the talk radio that I possibly can, and I know they're going to give me an answer. I might not have the, the magical answer to be able to distinguish the difference between socialism Romney and socialism Obama but I'll tell you what if I just listen to enough Sean Hannity I'm I bet I'll I bet I'll be knowing here pretty soon and then we're gonna have a real showdown but you know what we'll, we'll get past that one for right now man because well you're kind of making me look dumb here and I don't really <laughs> like looking dumb man. I'll tell you what Mario these guys these guys have the same idea of what government is and your buddy Romney uh, look this up on the internet. He believes in the carrot and stick approach to government. Right. Carrot and stick, see? You're a dumb jackass, and he's going to use a stick on you to move you, or a carrot in front of you, so you can chase a carrot. That's and that's his approach to government, his carrot and stick approach. Uh, he's certainly convinced in his mind that he'll be a better master for you. Now, I guess Obama kind of uses, well, Romney uses the carrot and stick Obama uses open chain the stick and carrot, so he'll beat you first and then give you a carrot afterwards. Yeah, he uses a hope and change. Uh, I like this uh, Obamacare thing. Um, that you know, it's, he's he's totally convinced that well, he's sure helping America by giving every getting everybody medical coverage. You know, it's amazing to me. The more government gets involved in the um, medical coverage, the more expensive it gets. Yeah. Anybody in the chat room have a comment there, Mario? Well, yeah. I don't know, man, if anybody's really chatting right now. I think they're just, they were baffled by this, you know, this change in heart. And so they, they, they're they still there catching their breath right now because they okay. thought I had actually abandoned my principles and, you know, embraced Darth Romney over Lord Obama. Oh well, Darth and Lord. That's <laughs> what are those? What do they call those in Star Wars? You got the um, the Jedi warriors. What are the the ones? The dark ones. What are they called? Um, you remember the Sith? Oh what? yeah, the the Sith. I don't know. Well, the Sith or whatever the bad yeah, guys. Darth there. Vader. Yeah. So you know what? Robbie, there's a, there's I a, have your father. There's a lot of confusion. And, and people's minds. I think people. There's a lot of confusion in my mind, man. I'm gonna be honest with you, Mike. I'm confused, man. I just, I don't know. I don't know what to do, man. I'm. It seems like, you know, doing the right thing and and standing my ground is just so hopeless. Well, I'm not sure your ground is probably quicksand when you're supporting Romney, <laughs> but people are are still extremely confused about the purpose of government. And I think they're really confused. People are confused now in this 20th, 21st century 
uh, when it comes to you know life, liberty, property, pursuit of happiness, that kind of thing, they have adopted a entitlement mentality. I was reading a post, an email post today from uh, an anarchist who was complaining that there's no perfect world of liberty. And I'm going, man, what a welfare king this guy is. You know, it, I, that's like someone complaining that the food's not being dropped off at his house, that he's not getting low, getting uh, housing provided for him because, you know, after all, he li he's alive and he's guaranteed life, you know, uh, he's got this right of life, and so that means someone else should pay for it. And these people that have the audacity to think they should have this perfect world of liberty and you'd like do nothing for it. I tell people, life, liberty, property, and these are gardens. And you got this liberty garden, it's right next to your life garden, and the liberty garden is just full of liberties. But these weeds come in. And so the guy's uh, complaining has not got a perfect liberty garden. There's weeds there. Oh man, I'm entitled to perfect liberty. And then one weed after another, he's bitching, he's complaining about all these weeds, and eventually all these weeds are choking out his liberty and he's going, bad government, government's bad, it's just choking out all my liberty. Well, you allowed government's a tool created by man. And when you allow the wrong folks, they demonstrate time and time again that they're going to take your liberty from you, but you vote for them anyways. They even talk about it. They talk about, well, we're going to pass a law, you can't do that. And in my city, you're not going to have this smoke shop. And in my city, you're not going to have a F Street sex shop. And they, they run on these platforms where they're not talking about securing your liberty. They're talking about providing you some sort of security. Mm -hmm. So you ask for, they ask for this. They vote for people that have passed laws. With each new law, you really only need a few laws that say don't violate somebody's life, liberty, and property. And... Just a few laws to back that up. But no, we got uh, volumes and volumes. You could fill the skyscraper with them uh, of, of laws that are perversions of laws that are weeds that are choking out your liberty garden. And people are sitting there saying, geez, what happened to my liberty? I want, I want liberty. I don't have any liberty and it's all gone. And, and I'm looking and saying, oh my God, let me off this bizarro world. Don't you people realize that if you want liberty, you got to pull out the weeds that are choking the liberty? And you got one legislation generation after another. There's no repealing previous laws. There's going in and piling on to previous laws the new solutions to the problems created by previous laws to that and piling on more prohibitions, more prohibitions, more prohibitions. And you're going, She's no no liberty, and I don't have mo any more individual responsibility. I can't do what I want on my property, this, that, and the other thing. Yet you've acquiesced to the weeds. You don't pull them out. You just sit there. What can I do? I can't do anything. So that's what all these guys have in common, whether it's Romney or Obama. And people say, oh, you got to vote for Romney because Obama's so much worse. <laughs> They're the same guys. They're choking out our liberty. Why do I support anyone that's going to cho choke out my liberty and sell some new form of tyranny on me? Well, because you've bought into this. You, you're just hoping he's not, really. Uh, it's it's total delusion. Um, and it's it's apathy. Yeah, and this is this is the, the justification that's used. When I, and you're right. That if you talk to somebody who about these issues and you say well we need we need to do something in order to get back to the the core the, to the to the essence of why we started uh, government which was to secure to secure our rights and they'll just say well even if we get it back to that it's just going to it's just going to end up becoming a tool used to violate us and, and what they basically what they're saying is that um we're just weak, you know, human beings that, that we're, that we are, basically it's our destiny to be enslaved and to be used by others, but, uh, and there's just no way around it. Well, Mar Mario, when, when we 
allow for this idea of something to nothing for nothing to flourish in our system yeah then we become more weak we get this idea that you know people are entitled to 50 60 million people on food stamps now or all these entitlement programs that they're entitled to it without paying a price for it that whole idea uh, transfers out into you're entitled to happiness without paying a price for it and you're entitled to liberty without paying a price for it right. and that is the worst tyranny upon the mind of man that could ever possibly be because that ends us up in a condition where we're starving to death we have l total misery and, and, and no pursuit of happiness in that kind of a scenario and there's no liberty no liberty is actually your volitional free will choice to make a a decision to have self determinism in your life and to be able to, to you know do what you want and this is the whole reason we created the tool of government in the first place when you said to secure our rights frederick bastiat in the book the law uh, and I just kind of rereading this, you get a, a more solid understanding. And, and I read some Thomas Paine, Common Sense, and some different writings from other people uh, throughout history. And then, uh, you know, including Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, then when he says the purpose of government is to secure these rights that are our inalienable rights. And Bastiat explains that uh, you, we all, each of us, individually have a right to defend our life with deadly force if need be or our property this is my property I have a right if you try to steal this property to defend my property with deadly force if necessary and um, that's the same thing with your liberty now we go and turn and say okay government according and with Jefferson's idea Thomas Paine's idea in his book uh, Common Sense is that government is a necessary evil it's evil because it requires that we give up something for the protection of the rest of our production and so then that's why we have government and if we are delegating to government our right to use deadly force to protect our life liberty and property and a sense in a collective organizational sense that doesn't mean that I no longer have that power myself. If you come to my house and you come there with intention to kill me, I still have the power to defend my life with deadly force. But we're delegating to government the judicial system of the collective organization of that power. And uh, for example, uh, you know, you did kill me and I wasn't successful in defending my life, that power that I have of retribution is still resident in the government and all of us we've given that uh, and governments are used as a tool to secure our life, liberty and property and to use that deadly force if needed to carry that function out then that power resides in government to do just exactly that but we I've never delegated and none of us would agree consciously to delegate to government the right to government to violate our life, liberty and property. And as soon as we allow these miscreant politicians to write one law that goes beyond their mandate, then we end up in the nightmare that we're about to live and many of us are already currently living in the tyranny of government. It's the maniacs that have got control of the tool of government it's like the crazy guy that got a hold of the gun and went out and killed people we don't think the gun is evil government's not evil it's the people who have perverted it and use it for their own ends that make it evil and that's the battle we're engaged in Romney or Obama are the same kind of evil and until people get that and say I insist on my life, my liberty, and my property. I've had it. No moss from you guys. That's it. And then we have a true revolution and get back to our basic roots. And Well, and that's the problem, yeah. man. That's, you know, and it's like we got a whole group of people right now who were Ron Paul supporters, and they're getting sucked into this idea that um, 
so, so, somehow Romney's go, not going to do the same thing that Obama's going to do. And so they support him and they promote his policies instead of recognizing that the time has come to just say no more and, and to not vote for either of them and that by abstaining from voting for evil you are not doing anything evil in, in fact you're most likely doing something good and, and it and this is what needs to happen, and it, it it hurts me, man, to see so many of my fellow Paul bots just like lose the drive, lose the, the the motivation. It makes me question what their how firm their grasp was on, on why we were supporting somebody who was principled and who didn't capitulate to the status quo and to and to the evil, really, that it is. And it, well, this is a tyranny, Mike. That I, I, you know, I'm trying. It's what we've been doing these tyranny busters here for a little while now, and so I've really tried to identify some of the tyrannies that I have on inside of my own mind, and that are in popular culture things that you know may not be easily recognized as a tyranny, but have are uh, opinions that we have of our own based on on lies and fraud. And you know, I'm about to have a baby. And me and thought that was your wife. Well, I'm <laughs> my wife is about to have a baby, and we've uh, we've decided to go the natural route in the pregnancy. So we went. We've gone to a birthing center, and the birthing center requires us to take classes. Right, you have to take two months of classes to go over the biology, uh, uh, the the physics of, of birth and what to expect you know uh, inside of the room where the baby's going to be born uh, <clears throat> we also have to have made a commitment that we're my wife I, you know I'm only a supporter here you know and I but that she's not going to ask for an epidural which is uh, you know a, a, a serious dose of, of pain medication that's injected directly into the spine and so she she's she's decided that she does not want to introduce any chemicals into the birthing process because it's very well known that any drugs that she ingests will it through the bloodstream is going to go directly to our daughter and she wants she thinks that's going an irresponsible parent that would subject their children to these to these uh, medicate not I don't say medication to these drugs to these narcotics is really what it is and so that that we've decided to do this you know uh, and uh, I when I tell people about this in my life you know my family's been very supportive but just to most people that I'll they'll you know they say oh you're having a baby where are you gonna have the baby at I'll tell them well we're gonna have it at the birthing center and they're like what you're gonna have a birthing. What is that like? One of those home births? One of the you're gonna have it in a in a bathtub, and it's like, yeah, that's what that's what we're gonna do, and they're and they're confused that my wife would go against the you know seventy percent of women who now have epidurals, and you know against the status quo that she would take this 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 alternative view. And and so I, I, I because in their mind, the had not having this narcotic numb her, and having a, a a doctor there to you know induce the labor, is somehow going to be uh, detrimental to my child, and to and and is is somehow going to put my child at risk. So the tyr this is the tyranny as I see it, is that. An epidural will numb my wife. These epidurals, the inject, the injection, just the injection, putting it right into your spine. There's a small percentage of women that never walk again because of this. So right there, this is uh, this is already, you know, detrimental. Um, but but then the the but putting chemicals into my child when they're when they're just being born, like like they don't see this as contradicting to their to to what they believe to be responsible parent like and so 
I want to be as clear, as clear as I can here, even though I, even in my mind I'm not so, totally 100% clear. But if if a woman throughout her pregnancy is using drugs, is drinking, is smoking, we would look at her and say, what an irresponsible parent, because we know that those those chemicals are going into the child's bloodstream. But if she wants to use drugs at maybe the most important time of the, the birth, which is the, the moment of labor, w the tyranny on our mind says, well, that's not the same. A and and, and to, to do anything different is to go against the grain and you must be some sort of hippie freak, some weirdo. A and it, so it, the, this tyranny, as I see it now, has had to have been put in, I, and I'm talking to everybody, Mike. I, I'm not... I mean, I, I, out of everybody that I talk to, man, it's like maybe 5%. You know, say I've talked to uh, 50 people about this, you know. Maybe f f five people have said, um, have said, well, that's really cool. But the other 45 people have just looked at me as if I'm like an alien from another planet. And and so and and so let me get to the let me get to the gristle here, man, and and tie that into the Bastiat, you know, Bastiat in his book The Law, he says that the fatal flaw of man is that we identify work with pain, and because we identify work with pain, we will always, or at least most of the time, allow somebody else to do the work for us. That we, so that we don't have to feel pain, and when, especially if you look at conservatives or whatever the you know Republicans today, they will they will say, well, anybody who does that is a welfare queen. Anybody who will who who will get something in between themselves and work, is is somebody who who thinks they're entitled. But I think that this 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 because at our moment of birth. So many of our parents have allowed chemicals to get in between the pain and the and and the and the the experience that that we we've lost that drive and it's like all these forty five people who look at my wife as if she's some sort of freak you know like how is it that we look at somebody who will accept the pain? of labor or in Bastiat, you know, somebody who will accept the pain of work. Isn't that somebody who has courage? Isn't that, who, isn't that somebody who says, I'm not going to numb myself to the pain just so that I can enjoy my life a little bit more? I mean, that's, that's courageous, man. We should, we, we, we should like hold people up. Uh, we should exalt people who will who who will who will not just like step aside from the pain and, and will embrace it? And we should say, man, that's 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 a, that's a real person right there. That's the type of person that that's a role model right there. Really, that's a role model, and that's what that's what we should we should strive to embrace the necessary pains of life. Yeah, that's what. And, and well, yeah. I, let me interject something there too, because a lot of folks listening to that would think that you're uh, condemning those people who get the epidermals, right. epidurals. Right, right. And uh, so, and, and they're, they're, they would react to, well, who the heck are you? Who do you right. What do you think you are? And what are you condemning us? And, right, right. and acting like, you know, we're abusing our child for that. Right. So, um, and th so that that's really a part of the, if you look at the tyranny upon the mind of man too, is that if these people that you, you know, you talk to and, and the greatest majority of them want to use the epidural. Uh, my question would be is, are they doing that on an actual thought out uh, basis? Or are, are they doing it because it's so much easier? Just, uh, this is what everybody's doing, this is a fad, there's no problem, or uh, it doesn't affect a child. Are they really actually researching and getting the information? No, and that's, no. that's the problem. That's that is, the tyranny. That is the tyranny because these are just, they have based their own op opinions not on actual research, but on what everybody else is saying. Because I, 
uh, doing the research now myself and I, I saw this video the other day and I, I mean I've seen multiple videos this is not just propaganda coming out from the birthing center or natural birthing places but they'll show a child whose mother had an epidural and a child whose mother didn't have an epidural and and the the child whose mother didn't have one they'll place the newborn baby on the the stomach of the mom and the baby will crawl I'm talking out two hours born will crawl up to the mother's breast and self latch onto it will attach to the mother's breast all of its own self-determination really and then they'll show in comparison the child whose mother did choose to have a, a epidural or some other sort of medication and the baby will just lay there on the mother's stomach you know t i mean with a gloss look over their eyes and is obviously being affected by the, these narcotics, and I'm glad that you brought that up, Mike, because this is where we've this is this is the hard part about like discussing the tyrannies on our minds, right? Is that like, is I'm not trying to condemn anybody or tell anybody that they're evil because they've accepted these premises, but I just want to challenge people to not condemn me for something that I want to do when they haven't actually done any research on the matters. Yeah, and so that, that'd be a little more self-determinism in the action, but, and when and part of your discussion there, you make a point about if you're too quick to re reach for this epidural, then you're maybe uh, d doing engaging a little bit in, uh, you know, I want it to be easy, I kind of want something for nothing, kind of thing if you're just doing it on an automatic basis like without doing the research I'm sure you would agree that some uh, if you go into it you with the idea you don't want any of that pain medication and then during the experience uh, the pain is just so uh, overwhelming you say do something and, and that you're not going to exclude that you, uh, no, from no, being a, no, absolutely being an option, not. Absolutely you know? not. And that's that's what they that's the kind of the the portrait that's painted there is because I have just like said from the get go that I don't want to use this narcotics, but there is a time and a place for these things. I'm not anti technology. I'm just saying, you know, if our bodies are if we we, we are given the ability to do something naturally, like we're given the ability to work naturally and to secure our rights naturally let's let's not um, you, you just you know look over the fact and try to introduce technology into it let's 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 actually like embrace this part of of being alive and I'll tell you what man just the the epidural thing that is is so what happens right is that the woman goes she's going into labor and she's already decided she's gonna get an epidural so then she, when she gets the epidural um, this causes uh, for the uh, contractions to not happen so frequently and the contractions are what needed the baby to come out so then what happens is the doctor says okay well we need to now introduce Pitocin which is the uh, this is what it induces the baby to be born so it makes the contractions happen so ju you've now totally like given up on any type of uh, just from natural birth and then these things because there's this contradiction your body's not working naturally it's not have, allowing other hormones to be uh, released Th this is what causes so many women to have to have cesareans and the, uh, cesareans uh, now you're introducing a whole nother problem you know people get infections from them people they sometimes are not able to even have babies anymore because of these infections and it, it, this tyranny it, it 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 has the potential really to uh not only make it hard for me and you to have conversations but it, it can really cause biological problems for people in the future so you're not against them having the option of the using these drugs when they, they need them during the childbirth no then no, how come no, you're no. against uh people using drugs to get away from the pain of life <laughs> uh, you know i know you conservatives don't want people to use um you know marijuana or any of these other 
drugs that they don't get from a, a prescription from a, what do they call these uh, drug factories that are they have a license to uh, to dope up people what's that called hospitals uh, or prescription <laughs> uh, pharmacies oh yeah pharmacies where you know you can give them Ritalin or Prozac or Valium or some of those goodies uh, but you're why are you against um, you know Street drugs being a good Romney supporter like yourself. Well, no, I know, man, and it's a hypocrisy that I, I have a hard, I have a real hard time getting over. My, Mike, but I, I have a, another. I, I want to talk about another tyranny that I've, I've found on my mind here, man, and I found on some other people's mind, and, and, and um. Well, you, you come to the right place because this is tyranny, but <laughs> you know, I, I hate to, I, I, I don't want to like. We're, this is the problem here with like you know being anti-republican, and or I don't want to say anti-republican, but anti-establishment Republicans, and uh, and 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 having this show here like I don't want to just make it seem like all we do is like follow the the mainline Republican uh, complaints because but we do share some of the same like you said a common thread in some of our. Um, you know concerns about the country i just happen to think that being you know not, we're a little bit more principled and 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 uh don't just throw them away whenever it doesn't fit our um, you know box or our agenda here but the national debt mike i was talking to somebody and they said you know what the national debt it doesn't really matter they said you know 15 and a half trillion dollars they said that's that's just like you it's unfathomable you can i mean it's it's unreal and and actually said you know like it doesn't it doesn't matter and i think this is i think that this tyranny is really like prevalent because and it may not be conscious on some people some people just may have never thought about it but i mean can you not be concerned about the 15 and and counting trillion dollars that our country's in debt, and still think that it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, the the only way to like not be like concerned about it is to have told yourself that it doesn't matter. Like, oh, and that's how you can go along living your uh, daily life, and that's how you can go along voting for people who will don't do anything for the national debt and and, and just like keep the machine turning is because you've just like kind of told yourself, hey, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Well, these folks that think it doesn't matter, I mean, if you would ask them and say, well, what if you're a family that makes twenty five thousand a year? And you're spending forty thousand a year, and your debt is, uh, you know, one hundred and fifty thousand. Um, would that matter, or is there does it come a point where you you just the whole thing caves in on you? Yeah, well, that's 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 where the tyranny, and and we get into the mechanics of the tyranny, and I I tried to come, of course. Uh, to answer your question first, though, that person would say, "Well, I, you know, I'd, I'd have to go bankrupt, you know, and I would lose everything, and you know, people would come and take my house and stuff." But so they 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 are able to recognize that if it was their own personal, um, you know, financial situation, that they would be in a world of pain. But they're in denial that this it will have the same effects because it's a national debt. And so I was trying to think of like where where that. Um, you, you know how they're able to um, justify that type of the, the, um, the distinction, and um, I, I I think it, I think people it is in their mind is that they say, well we got the military, right? I mean, yeah we might owe all this money to people, but we got the military, the, the United States military, and so if you know we do end up owing you know twenty trillion dollars to other countries, it's like. They can't really ever come and do anything to us. Like if I own, if I own the bank, you know, uh, money for my house, and I don't pay them for my house, well, yeah, they can come take my my house because I don't have an army to protect my house. But we got the military, man. And well, maybe people don't worry about the national debt because it's like they go like this. All right, so the United States says, sorry, we're not paying anybody anything. Uh, that's it. The debt that's gone, wiped out, zero. Uh, it's, it's not real to them because they don't they don't personally owe it. 
And so I would think it would be only those people that hold, hold treasury bills and things like that that would um, be uh, worried about that scenario. So what you got on one hand is people that have the treasury bills are thinking, there's no way government's going to default. And on the other hand, people that don't say, I don't care if they don't pay that off. So no big deal. So it's all wiped out. Um, so the, the, you've got realities there that kind of tyrannies in both sense because uh, on one sense the people think that forever the government will be able to pay its debts because they think uh, they can extort it from the population but when the population reaches a point where there's no more production to extort then um, the, those people holding these T-bills are going um, the government's default they're not paying me and, well, and actually they're defaulting when you get a 1% interest on a T-bill and the inflation rate is 10%. <laughs> well, and so that's where I've, I've, uh, another part of the tyranny there, man, is I, I don't know if it's even conscious, um, you know, but because people are, a lot of people are out of touch with inflation and, and the effects of, of that, but they, they do. They think that, um, well, hell, we can we can just like borrow all this money and then We'll just pay a back in money that's worth less, and so we end up kind of coming out <laughs> on the good side of it. I, I think that that might be a, a little more conscious um, tyranny uh, of their mind, and and, and just uh, it's it's a horrible thing. But I mean, I, I mean, the 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 my, my I guess what I would I, when I reach out to these people is is like, hey man, this really does matter. You know, when it comes a point to when the government can't pay back its debt, like, no, this this does matter, all right? Fifteen trillion in counting, when this when it comes to a point when they can't pay it back, man, all oh, hell is gonna break loose. It's gonna get ugly. I mean, we're and like you said, people T, T bills aren't going to be getting paid. Uh, I mean, look at uh, look at the Lakeside Water Board, like you're saying. Look at how much money they got invested in T bills. All oh, that, all oh, that's going to be gone. Imagine how many um, um, cities uh, around the the country have all their the, their savings invested in T bills. All of it's going to be gone. And, and 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 you know, this part of me, Mike, it says that this this point in time. When this this uh, this debt is going to be out of control, unsustainable is like not very far off, man, and uh, and, <laughs> and we we got to be prepared for this, man, because I mean it's it's going to be it's going to be hard. Well, if the government's not paying these T bill instruments off, then people that would be you know cashing them in and and using the money to spend it in the economy. That um, you know, as their retirement, and whatnot, that won't be there. So that's going to be less energy flowing into the economy. And and the real big uh, problem there is that if there's no uh, credit available, say, left in the United States government, if they're not going to be paying the T bills off, then who's going to want to you know invest in them and and, and buy them no more? And so then, what does the government? The government has to do all of its excessive spending and fund it by the Federal Reserve um, Bank and the printing press. And it, will this, in fact, create that tsunami that makes the value of the dollar worthless? Not just worth less, but worthless. Hyper, yeah, hyperinflation, yeah. and all of this money that people thought that they had put away in what they thought was safe and secure, either banks or um, stock markets or 401ks and whatnot, and you wake up and you say, it's uh, it's, it's worthless. Uh, people still in America, the memory is so short that they can't remember this kind of time. But in 1992 or thereabouts, the Russian ruble, ruble? ruble uh, dropped in value where I think it was pegged at 67 cents, one ruple to 67 cents, it dropped to 5,000 ruples to one dollar. And this is the 92, so anybody that had these uh, was like worthless. And so, and of course this has happened in other currencies in the, uh, the last century. 
And has there ever been a country that's been in a greater debt um, ratio than the United States is now in unfunded liabilities and obligations? And this whole scenario or syndrome of people wanting something for nothing, they want the baby without the pain, they want to be fed and clothed and sheltered and health care without the pain. They should, you know, I'm entitled, just give it to me. They want the freedom without the pain. I'm entitled, give it to me. The one that bothers me the most, Mario, is the total oblivion towards the idea of what is freedom, what's an infringement on freedom, what takes freedom away, and what needs to be done to stop that, and then an abs a desire to do something about it. That that's pretty much missing. Even if you take up the forty or fifty thousand people that supported Ron Paul in a country of three hundred and thirty million, it was something like only three thousand of them contributed the maximum to his campaign. So this and then a lot of these groups, the Tea Parties or other these groups, they just know something's wrong. They don't have this touchstone to understand what government is or what it's supposed to do and, and what it's doing. Instead, it's violating it. In fact, they vote for candidates that preach and talk about violating government's mandate because these guys are promising them some security. And, uh, well, we'll fix Social Security, we'll do this or that. How can they fix anything like you're talking about? A trillion and a half uh, deficit in, in, in the spending scenario. Yeah, I've been accused of people that I'm a doomsayer kind of guy. But I'm like saying, this is a re isn't this just simple reality? Reality, man. You'd see it in a family budget. How come you can't see it in a... A massive government budget. Well, and it's it it is reality, man, and it's it's a d delusion that's created by this fraud, this lie, this tyranny on our minds, man, and and so we we see the inevitable outcome of this tyranny, man, is 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 this doom, and, and it's you know you can't wish this away. This is this is not subjective. This isn't something that is subject to your hopes and, and, and to your dreams. Like you can't just like want the fact that eventually debt uh, consumes the ability to produce. Like you can't just wish that away. And and, and for some reason we're we're able to we're able to. In, it's like we have a. Uh, uh, intellectual epidural, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like right into the brain, and it's just like, d don't, don't, don't worry. You don't have to push to get this baby out. Don't worry about it, and and you know it, it'll just come. It'll just happen. It will, will, and and then what ends up happening is massive amounts of blood. You know, s surgery needs to happen, and. and and then you, the, you know, well, you get sewn up at the end, and you you hope that you can make it out of the, the hospital alive right now, man. And the, I don't want to be a doomsday either, Mike. But man, with it's, I don't even I don't even think look at this as being like like do, doom. I mean, I think that the only way that we are going to be able to have any positive effect on this is to identify the problem, be realistic about the problem, and by doing so. Well, we're and, and and at the same time, you know, having this this uh, this real solution, right? Which is to understand why we uh, have instituted government in in the first place. That's the solution. Like that, that's it. Well, we got to understand that. And and the thing is that we see what we see as an argument too often is people are arguing the utilitarian approach to things. They're saying. This approach leads to better prosperity. This is a kind of a, dis um, a, a bone of contention I have, say, with the Austrians. You got the Austrians uh, economic school and the Keynesian economic school, and they'll be arguing uh, their utilitarianism of their approach. They'll be arguing how their system produces much more prosperity, et cetera, et cetera. 
And so, and that's how people can argue communism versus capitalism and whatnot. And they argue on the basis of this system is going to come out better. And I say that should never, ever be the argument. You shouldn't have the right to keep and bear arms because you're a safer society or a better society with arms. Or the other side of the argument is without guns, then people are safer. And so that's out to conjecture. The argument should always be based in, do I have an inalienable right to defend my life, liberty, and property with deadly force if necessary? Is this a right that I've been given and I have been given the charge and the responsibility to take care of that right? And is that really the purpose of government, is to protect our freedoms? Then we wouldn't be on this road to death and destruction and collapse of our system because what we've traded for a century and a half is liberty for false security, and we see it coming apart. Federal Reserve banking system with fiat currency was the, we traded the liberty of using whatever we wanted for currency, gold, silver, whatever, for the false security of a banking institution that supposedly was going to give us stable employment, stable in prices and, and security in that sense, and it robbed us of our liberty. That's how we should get back to this argument. And I guess i got to finish this with another point, is that people expect this liberty for nothing. It will never happen. It will never be. You have to be men and women and say no to tyranny in government. I don't care what it is, if you want to smoke marijuana or whatnot. Get with 500 or 1,000 of your buddies and go down there and say, here I am, arrest me, prosecute me, jail me if you want. We're not taking this tyranny anymore. That's right. All right, Mike. Well, man, that hour went by fast, man. You know, and I, I hate to constrain ourselves, but uh, you're you're absolutely right about about that. Um, we we have to uh, get together, like-minded folks, and make this world, uh, you know, a place where freedom is the reason why. Free freedom is it yeah and, and you don't have to have you don't have to have any other uh excuses beyond that you know why, well why do you think that why do you think people should be allowed to do this because it's freedom you know but why do you think people should be able to smoke crack because it's freedom man they have the free they were born with the, the rights to do whatever they want with their body you know as long as they're not doing anything to hurt anybody else then that's all right you know if i don't may not agree with it uh, but or condone it, uh, but th th this is this is it, man. So we got to get free, and we we got to get realistic, and uh, we got to bust up the tyranny. Adios, amigos. Peace. Next week.